My name is Jeroen Schemer and I teach at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. My uh, work uh, in the past was focused on uh, uh, Mizrahi cinema and as a natural continuation of that in a way it is the Jew in Arab cinema and that's the uh, current project. At least to an extent, I can attribute my interest in this uh, field, in these uh, uh, themes, uh, with my personal background. Uh, my parents are from Iraq. They came to Israel, Palestine. Uh, they met in Israel. And uh, there was a big thing, uh, we all know about it now, of, of denying your identity, of being shameful of who you are. Uh, considering, you know, that your parents are from the Arab world and it's more than shame. I mean, uh, there was in Israel at that time, like, oh, sus people were suspicious of any kind of notion of exile, of people coming from other places, using other languages. But it's much more extreme when it comes to people who came from the Arab world, because it's not like only not Israel, but it's associated with the enemy. So on different levels, I mean, from, you know, being uh, shameful of the language at home and uh, embarrassed by the food we eat and these things. And it's like almost a form of vindication now to go back and say, OK, you know what, I'm going to look into that. And it's like claiming something in a way. Yeah. I think one of the things that uh, you realize that um, you are part of some change that is happening now. And um, like, you know, I can refer to my book on Mizrahi cinema. There were some trends that, you know, I maybe started discerning, noticing. And I know that now it's like much more okay. It's much more uh, common to talk about it. It's more mainstream to, to kind of address these things. So I think that's a big thing that uh, you notice that uh, we're, we're still, West Mizrahi Jews were still marginalized. There's no question about it. But here, we have the conference here. I mean, it's an ex excellent example for what uh, I'm saying. It's part of a change, yeah. Who thought in Berlin, you know, you would have a conference about Arab Jews? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really complicated question and things change over time. And to say, you know, it was like, you know, the obvious things, was it good or bad? This is like what the lay person would ask. I mean, it's, it's really impossible to say. We need to contextualize it within, you know, specific period with specific groups. Uh, we, I mean, I would just give examples. I don't, I will not elaborate on that. I mean, but my dad, for example, uh, and I co corroborated that. I mean, I, people, uh, uh, from my parents' generation, I, they said the same thing, yeah? There was a big difference, for example, in Iraq, in Baghdad, in the 40s. I'm emphasizing all these things, yeah? Because I'm trying to be very specific. There was a big difference how uh, Shia treated Jews versus Sunnis, for example. There was a big difference with the whole thing of pollution, you know, purity, whatever, touching, using someone else's food, whatever. So... Uh, um, I cannot, there, 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 it would be foolish on the part of anyone to try, I think, to come with huge generalizations and say Jews and Muslims live together happily, whatever, and look what happened now because of colonialism, because of Jewish nation, uh, Zionism national, national movement, and because of Arab national movement, look what happens, everything is falling apart. We would say, I think no one in his right mind, her right mind, would uh, challenge the following that you should not, you should not map the European Ashkenazi relationships, relations with the Holocaust, with the pogroms, to map it into the Arab world, because the story is really different. And here I am talking about the broader scope, yeah? There is absolutely no question, even if you are the most Israeli, Jewish, conservative, whatever scholar, you have to admit that there is no comparison between the fate of Jews in Europe overall, yeah, and relatively uh, the much more positive kind of contacts Jews had in the Arab-Muslim world in the Middle East. 
Yeah, I mean, in uh, general, uh, Jews are under, um, when I say European, I'm really referring specifically under Christian rule, yeah? I mean, it doesn't need to be something that has to do with faith, per se, like in Nazi Germany. It's not faith, per se, it's a religious practice, yeah? It's more with race. But, I mean, the greatest, uh, the most extreme, obviously, um, sad points in history between uh, relationship between Jews and their neighbors happened in Europe. There's no question about it. In the Arab uh, world, you know, overall, overall, yeah, the Jews were the dimmies. They were, had certain status. They were protected minority. They were not like first class citizens, but there is nothing to compare their fate, it was much, much better compared to the, once again, the pogroms, the killings in, in uh, definitely the 19th century and the Holocaust in the 20th century. You have no equivalent to that. You have occasionally, and once again, sometimes it was instigated by actually a Christian's kind of, of uh, a, a convictions, yeah, of uh, the blood libel in Syria, for example, yeah. But once again, these were rare and uh, far in between, yeah. So they were not very frequent, yeah.